Well, hi everyone. I hope you're having a great day today. And uh, I hope everyone had a great Easter. <laughs> this is a kind of stale peep here, but they're still good for some things. Okay, today I want to talk about concussions. This was a recent news item. Specifically, uh, the latest story on it was uh, how women and men uh, both get concussions. In fact, women are more likely to get concussions than men in sports. And also how most of the research on concussions has been conducted on men. So they were portraying this as a gender gap sort of story. There were some things that troubled me about those news reports though. I mean, that's a valid issue. Uh, number one though, um, concussions aren't uniquely a sports thing. When you go down the top causes of concussions, I think the, the number one on the list um, is a fall. Like, you know, you trip and fall down the stairs, you, you, you're shoveling the snow and you hit an icy patch and you fall over, uh, just things like this. And um, that, that is the most common cause, I'm pretty sure of it. I, you know, I guess it depends on who you Google these days. Um, but uh, car accidents are another huge cause of concussions. Now, sports are also a cause. Sports can be very dangerous. Sports can be ben beneficial, yes. I mean, it gives kids the exercise they need. Um, it, it teaches them teamwork and, um, you know, discipline and a whole lot of other things. But at the same time, sports can be very dangerous and you have to watch it. One thing that troubled me about that concussion report was that uh, uh, one lady was talking about how she had the hardest time getting insurance to pay for the surgery that she needed on her neck. And so I thought I'd talk a little bit about concussions. Uh, before I do that, this is the disclaimer, I am not a doctor, I'm not your doctor. Um, I'm not your health practitioner of any kind, not a chiropractor, not an osteopath, not a massage therapist. Um, I, I am somebody with a degree in history and in sociology. Um, I am interested in uh, medical history and specifically um, alternative medicine. I have used it on myself by trial and error and have fixed things that doctors told me um, they couldn't help me with. And that, that verbiage that they use when they say there's nothing more we can do for you, I want to get into that too because, well, I'll just say it right now. When they say there's nothing more we can do for you, listen to how they word that. There's nothing more we can do for you. We. Doesn't mean the chiropractor down the street can't help you, but we can't because, you know, it goes beyond our licensing or our training. You know, so, so listen carefully when your doctor tells you things like that. He's not probably not going to refer you to the chiropractor, but um, they, they will tell you there's nothing more we can do for you. That means something. The, the words mean something. They're trained to talk like that, like almost like an attorney. So, um, you know, pay attention to that. Um, okay, so uh, surgery in the neck versus concussions. If you have a concussion or even suspect you have a concussion, you need to seek medical help right away. It's my understanding that concussions are what they call traumatic brain injury. Um, the, the brain is supposedly injured when it hits the, the interior of the skull wall and, and that starts like a chain reaction. Uh, because your, your nervous tissue is linked together, there are a lot of neurotransmitters that are chemical, and if they start going crazy, they're going to be sending um, signals to other things that, that damage those other cells. Um, that's a very unscientific way of saying it. Um, I agree with a, a concussion clinic's YouTube videos, of the, the man who uh, makes those who says, you should seek somebody who's experienced in concussions, okay, in concussions. Because a lot of doctors, uh, you know, were trained 20, 30 years ago on this. Uh, they're not up on the latest research, and it's a fast-evolving field. So it's, it's best to find somebody who's experienced with concussions. I agree with that. Um, now, the other thing I agree with, um, well, it's not just one thing, a lot of things that he says make sense, and that's why I'm providing a link to one of his videos below. You can go from there. Uh, but another thing he mentions uh, is diet. 
Uh, and, and absolutely, I agree. When you're healing from any kind of an injury, you need to give your body the raw materials uh, to fix itself. When it comes down to neck injury versus concussion, that's what I was concerned about. It's my understanding that neck injury is not the same as concussion. Concussion is cellular damage in your brain. Traumatic brain injury, TBI is the term for it that they use in the medical field right now. Um, but neck injuries are something different. There are a lot of things that can help with neck injuries, um, including chiropractors. And some people tell me, well, I don't like it when a chiropractor cracks my neck, you know, and apparently there have been a few accidents through the years. I mean, compared to all the complications with surgery and everything else, it's a minute number. But supposedly people have had their spinal cord damaged from a chiropractor. And as chiropractors are usually very careful. They'll make sure you have the x-rays they need. If you don't have x-rays in the positions they want you, um, then they will order more x-rays. They'll also want to see the x-rays that your regular doctor took, and they'll want to know your doctor's opinion on whether or not, you know, your, your injury is healed. So chiropractors are usually pretty careful that way, and when they say cracking your neck, it's like a knuckle crack. It's not like <laughs> anything damaging the neck. I mean, basically, they hold the weight of your skull in their hands. You're laying flat on your back on a table. They, they pick up your head in their hands and just with the weight of the skull they kind of calculate which way they have to go and then suddenly they they move your their hands and your neck will like pop like a knuckle and supposedly that'll um try, encourage it to go back to where it's supposed to be after it was knocked out of alignment now if you don't like that and if you need and especially for necks there is something called a NUCA certified chiropractor, and I have used them. I've used, uh, I think, three different ones in three different states. A NUCA, by the way, uh, stands for Neck Upper Cervical Chiropractic Association, and they do have their own website, NUCA.org, where you can um, try to find a NUCA certified chiropractor in your area. They're not as common as regular chiropractors, but in my experience, they're very good and well worth the effort. And um, that's a lot more gentle. They'll put you on your side. They'll, first of all, their x-rays, they, they take a set of x-rays and then they draw lines through it to determine exactly how many degrees your neck is off kilter. And then you come in for the next appointment and then they will lay you on your side, either the right side or left side, depending on how they're gonna push your neck. I mean, even a few degrees off can cause major problems. And they'll push like either here or uh, you know up here or sometimes I, I mean even as high as your ear I think sometimes, and they will adjust your um, neck into an, an exact position. And then they'll take X-rays to make sure they got it. And um, in my experience, the follow-up is much less than with regular chiropractors. Uh, and most of the time they, they get the adjustment just right and it's just follow-up or it's still pushing the same bone back in where they don't need to do x-rays. I mean, they try to be conservative about x-rays, but by the nature of what they do, um, they, they do need more x-rays to start than a regular chiropractor. You know, I should probably do an entire show on chiropractors and NUCA certified and all of this. A friend told me that NUCA chiropractors also use energy healing, even though they don't tell you this, and that's why their table is so low to the ground. And when they adjust you, it feels like their knuckle is popping. It doesn't even feel like your neck is moving, but it is. That's not their knuckle cracking, that's your neck. It's just a teeny tiny little adjustment. And so, you know, it's just so gentle. A, a lot of people like that, and it is very exact. Another type of adjustment or um, even advice on exercising that'll help um, another field is kinesiology. And I actually went up to Canada to, to see somebody um, who followed the Body Management School of Kinesiology when Al Berry was still alive. Um, the, the whole field of kinesiology, I don't think you're going to get somebody who is just does Al Berry's type of kinesiology now. I think you're going to get somebody who was trained by him and a whole lot of other people and they use all kinds of different techniques, whatever their patient needs. Um, there are a lot of people who are very skilled in the field of kinesiology. And, um, you know, that would be very suitable for somebody in sports. Uh, now, um, again, this is something I'm not going to go deeply into. 
uh, I could describe my own adjustments, but not for a video that I want to be as long as this. I don't want this one to be terribly long where people aren't going to watch it. Uh, another thing that I'm reminded of is uh, Dr. Andrew Weil's book, Spontaneous Healing, where he described, I think the man was an osteopath, and I think his name may have been Dr. Fulford. I don't know. I could be wrong on that. I, I read that book a long time ago. Um, but town people would just come like far and wide to see the man because he was so good at fixing things. And a lot of people don't know this, but when if you're in a state where doctors of osteopath, doctors of osteopathy are licensed to practice just like a medical doctor, instead of MD, they'll have DO after their name. They get every bit as much training as a medical doctor, plus they get a number of extra hours to study osteopathy, which is a lot like chiropractic. It manipulates the bones. So even though your DO is acting like an MD, he can do that. I mean, he or she can do that. It's just that they choose not to if they don't offer you that. But that would be great. That'd be like one-stop shop. Actually, they're physical therapists. I haven't had great luck with physical therapists, but you know, for some people they work. Even massage therapists. Massage therapists can help. I mean, I had a chiropractor who would send me to a massage therapist after she adjusted me. She said, in her experience, the adjustments hold better with massage. Energy healing. And with energy healing, I'm also including meditation. I have had experiences through the years. I mean, even just the other day, I saw this odd thing pop up on YouTube as a suggestion, and it wasn't even related to anything I was watching. It was just something on a, a, a quick 15 minute meditation. So I tried it and at the end of it, suddenly my neck popped like, like an adjustment. And, and I'm there like, wow, you know, that hasn't happened for a long time because, you know, obviously my neck hasn't had many issues lately and or any issues I know of. And um, I didn't feel that I needed it, but Things like that will happen after energy healing or meditation, or I shouldn't say things will happen, but things may happen like that. A lot of people experience it. I mean, healing that you'd normally expect to come from herbs or um, a practitioner, like a chiropractor or a doctor, uh, a lot of times that can heal you just as well. And I'm including prayer in that. You know, prayer, meditation, uh, energy healing, you know, you have Reiki, uh, pranic healing, uh, just all kinds of different types of energy, energy healing. Oh, and I did bring up herbs. One thing that helped me a lot with back spasms was valerian root. And it took me a while to find it, but it's a very inexpensive herb. It's actually one of the top five herbs used in the United States, but most people use it for sleep. And uh, it, it actually smells terrible. It, to me, it smells like rancid mint. Uh, some people say it smells like stinky socks, but you know, you could either get the capsule or the tincture. Um, but you know, I've actually found it for around $10 a bottle and that price still seems to be holding, <laughs> but it seems to relax the muscles. It helped me a lot. And there are options in, in um, you know, some people like for broken bones, they like comfrey that has lantoins that help, but also some type, type of alkaloid. Comfrey used to be called knit bone, but you're not supposed to take it internally because it can damage the liver. But there are a lot of topical creams with it in there and supposedly it accelerates the healing of bones and sometimes other tissue. Um, and, and of course, for things like concussions, anything to do with the nervous system, like omega-3 fatty acids, calcium, magnesium, um, choline, inositol, um, B vitamins, I mean, anything like that. When you're talking about nutrition, D3, K2, all kinds of things, you know, for raw materials and also herbs that may help. Um, this is something that, you know, you need to research yourself or consult a naturopath or an herbalist on. Um, you know, obviously I'm, I'm none of those things. I've just tried a lot of this myself. And, uh, you know, you can take what works and, you know, just move on from things that don't. You know, thankfully in this country, you can go and you can do your own research and go down to the health food store or grocery store. For concussions, once they're healed, there has been some experimentation with the cherry red LED light. Anyway, uh, you know, you can research a lot of things. And thankfully in this country, uh, you can buy a lot of things over the counter and use your own research and make your own decisions. Now, 
Obviously, you can run those past your uh, medical doctor if you want. In general, medical doctors seem to discourage supplements. Um, if you're in a situation where you've had a traumatic brain injury, though, I don't know how much they're going to be discouraging. Uh, I think, uh, you know, a lot of times um, they may actually be encouraging you at least. Uh, most doctors these days are on board with at least a multivitamin, but you'll have to ask your own doctor if, if that's the advice you want to take. Um, or, you know, this, your specialist in um, concussions, if you can find one. The gist of this basically is you need to separate your concussion from your other types of injuries. Uh, because, uh, you know, somebody, a doctor who's concerned about concussions isn't necessarily going to be the best choice for your neck injury. Uh, there are different specialties. This is totally up to you whether you want to go totally the way of uh, medical doctors. Uh, there may be times when people actually need neck surgery and back surgery, uh, but, uh, you know, there are other options available to you and you can research those on your own. So I just wanted to bring that up, that concussions are not the same thing as neck injuries or back injuries. You may have received both at the same time from, from the same mishap, um, you know, from the same move on the field, from the same fall, from the same car accident. You know, obviously that, that was... You know, you were probably banged around pretty hard for any of this to happen. Um, but they're, they're not the same thing. Anyway, I hope this was helpful. And if you like this video, please hit like or subscribe. And have a great day.